What's up, Fandom Collective 1138? It's Waspinator coming to you with another video. And today, I'm going to tell you why Geeks and Gamers is a steaming trash fire for normie garbage. Okay, well, anyway, this is kind of a serious voice, so um, maybe I should drop the cartoon voice. Okay. All I have here is a Chromebook. I have no editing software, so I have my tablet set up here, Ethan Van Skyver style, and I'm going to let this video I just watched that Geeks and Gamers put out this morning play a little bit and pause it and comment and let it play and just kind of go along until I'm, I'm done. There's a few things that I, I mean, I... I see where he's coming from on a couple points, but so much of this is absolute insanity. Um, setting impossible standards that can never be met for satisfaction guarantees that you'll you're doomed to hate whatever they make. Well, anyway, let, let's get on with it and see what he's got to say. I know I might as well go ahead and play the lottery, um, but I have. A few things that I think I think can can really get episode nine back on track, and a few of them are absolutely crucial. Um, and I'm going to start with those crucial elements because if we don't get the crucial elements up front, then you can kiss it goodbye. You can kiss it goodbye because it's dead, it's gone. The single trilogy is broken and it's over with. Now I get it; it pretty much is at this point anyway. But if, in my opinion, if they follow what I'm going to say here. They can at least have a chance to get this thing back on track. So the first thing, the first thing that has to happen, and if this doesn't happen, then it doesn't matter. Any everything else I say doesn't matter. Uh, five bucks says he's gonna say fire Kathleen Kennedy. The first thing that has to happen, they have to split episode nine into two parts. You've got to do it. You oh well, he didn't say they had to fire Kathleen Kennedy. Never mind. Um, splitting episode nine into two parts. Then it, it's not episode nine anymore. What he's saying is he wants episode nine and ten. He he hates the new sequel series so much. He thinks we need two more, not just one more, to end this off. Uh, it, 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 let's keep going. You have to have time to fix the problems that the Last Jedi created. You have to. You're not going to be able to fix all those problems. Tell your proper story with episode nine and finish the trilogy in a two two and a half hour movie. It's not going to happen. This is one of the few things he says here that is somewhat legitimate. I just don't believe splitting episode nine into two sub movies, Infinity War style, is uh, something that Disney would ever do or is necessarily the, the right solution. Albeit, though, the way episode eight ended, and my my real true complaint about episode eight is that episode nine has to start from square one again. And so in the, in the what's supposed to be the final arc of a new trilogy, they're going to have to re-explain everyone's setup all over again. So, because episode 8 didn't really end with an unresolved story. Uh, in some ways, the sequel trilogies kind of run backwards. The first two movies run back-to-back story-wise, and then the third one was going to be kind of its own little self-contained thing. Whereas the original trilogy, the first Star Wars, is kind of its own little self-contained thing. And then Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi were more directly linked. There, there's still some time gap in between the movies, unlike in the sequel trilogy. But there's definitive story threads that linked one to the other. And whatever episode nine is going to be, it's not going to pick up where everyone exactly left off. Especially from all the rumors that we have started to hear about the pre-production and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, let's get, get back on to what Jeremy here has to say. It's going to be a train wreck, a complete train wreck. So you've got to split this thing into two parts. Split it into two parts. That gives you enough time to fix a lot of the problems in The Last Jedi. And then also gives you more time to write more of the story. Sprinkle some of those elements of the prequel era, the original trilogy era in and still collectively tell your story and end the trilogy on the right note. This is crucial. So They they do need to integrate prequel era storylines, characters, and technology into these 
sequel trilogies better than than they have been. They've been focused entirely too much on the aesthetic of the original classic Star Wars. This is true, and hardly the most original of observations either. Split it into two parts. It must be done. If that's not done, kiss it goodbye. All right, next thing. This is just as equally crucial as the two parts. So once you get the two parts, you have to do something. You have to bring Luke Skywalker into this uh, sequel trilogy. You have to do it. Not Jake Skywalker. Luke Skywalker. You bring Luke in. You you hand Luke his balls. You have him reattach them because you ripped them off. Then you hand him back his lightsaber. Then you get him off of that island and you let him go be the Grand Master Jedi that he is. Let him whoop some ass. Let him take some names. Let him show how badass he really is. Bring back Luke. Okay. This is one of the things that I consider to be like among the, the, the great myths of Star Wars fandom. Luke Skywalker is not a badass. Arguably, the, the, his one big badass moment was the rescue of Han Solo from Jabba the Hutt. And uh, other than that, he, he shot the, the shot that blew up the Death Star, yes, but that was hardly the most badass and epic of piloting scenes. He just flew straight down a trench and was able to not get blown up by Vader long enough for him to, to make the shot. And they'd already established that he's, he's good at making those kinds of shots. And Obi-Wan was with them in spirit and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, and then, yeah, he totally failed. And Empire Strikes Back by abandoning his training prematurely and then rushing off to face his father and uh, not at all accomplishing much there. Uh, and the, the big crux of him winning in the end of Return of the Jedi in the end came down to not martial skill or any sort of badassery or use of the force or doing anything particular power. It was his willingness to throw his lightsaber away and, and let fate take hold. Maybe not fate, but um, forced Vader into having to make a decision that Vader might not otherwise have had to make if, if Luke had just fought him to the death. He put himself in a position where he could be killed in order for his father to be able to be the one to do have the redemptive act. Um, it's badass in a very different kind of way, but not badass in the way he means right here. Luke, mother effing Skywalker. There are ways to do this. Dave Filoni has introduced ways to do this within Rebels. Do it. I don't care if it defies logic within the Star Wars universe or not. Do it. Because if you don't, then this sequel trilogy is dead. Next up, Rey. Rey has to be a Skywalker or a Kenobi. It absolutely has to happen. Um, there needs to be an explanation as to who she is, why she is who she is, why is she so good at everything, why, 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 answer these questions, but she needs to have... In the prequel trilogies, it was established that the Jedi didn't have kids. Um, they they didn't have families. There's some stuff in some comics about Ki-Adi Mundi getting an uh, exception, but he was an exception because his species had a really... Uh, off-kilter gender disparity between the amount of males and females, and they had so few males that he couldn't, it was irresponsible for the future of his species for him to refuse to service the ladies. But uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi didn't come from a famous line of, of Jedi Knights. Qui-Gon Jinn but doesn't come from a long bloodline of Jedi Knights. Mace Windu didn't come from a long bloodline of Jedi Knights. Yoda didn't come from a long bloodline of Jedi Knights. Luke Skywalker is an anomaly in that he is the, the product of a Jedi to then grow up and become a Jedi. Uh, the Skywalkers are in many ways are abominations and, and in some fashion having the Skywalkers be uh, wiped out uh, might in itself be a way of balancing the force because if Anakin was created using the dark side to manipulate 
midichlorians to uh, spark pregnancy in Shmi Skywalker, then he's not supposed to exist. And his children and grandchildren are not supposed to exist. And they are a great anomaly in the, uh, the pattern of destiny, of, of, of the mathematical equation of the force kind of a thing, you know, if you want to get a little quantum with it. Uh, anyway, let's keep going. Lineage to the Skywalkers or the Kenobis, something like that. It just has to happen. Um, next up. Uh, anyway, though, because of that, there's no reason why 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 Ray has to be the child of a famous Jedi and still be powerful. Because uh, all the aforementioned Jedi from the prequel area didn't need to have had Jedi parents for them to be powerful and have talent and be able to do quote unquote badass things. It's um, it's actually really small minded, I would say. To say that she has to have had an established lineage in order to be able to justify her power use. And, and before that, before I move on, and Ray also, we've got to see her struggle. We've got to see her going through some serious trials and tribulations with Luke. Luke is going to have to put her through hell, not not tickling her with a damn uh, leaf. So not only does he want for this next movie to come up with some way for Luke to return from being a Force ghost, but he wants to then have to go all the way through Ray meeting up with Luke and being trained sequence, which they already kind of did, and... They, they made it different for whatever reasons they want, largely because if they had made it exactly like Luke training under Yoda, there would have just been all these complaints about how... Uh, unfortunately, because of the way the fan base is, I think Star Wars is in a damned if it does, damned if it doesn't situation with almost any decision they make. So anyway, though, let's keep listening to this. No, we, we, she has to go through hell, and Luke needs to put her through hell to get her to where she needs to go. That is crucial. Next up, Kylo Ren needs his mask back on. Please, for the love of God, put his mask back on. Please, oh Lord. I loved Kylo in The Force Awakens. I still didn't like when he took his mask off in The Force Awakens, but I loved him in The Force Awakens. I don't want Twilight. I, I don't see why we can't live in both worlds where Kylo Ren could put the mask on for certain occasions when he wants to be imposing or go into battle or whatever. But other times where he takes it off, I, 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 I like that about him. He's not just another faceless helmet action figure like Boba Fett and Vader were in their own ways. Where I remember when I remember was I was a really little little kid, like around four and five, being kind of confused about whether or not stormtroopers and Darth Vader were were, were robot characters like three PO and R two. Having him take his helmet off and show that he's just a dude at least avoids that kind of confusion with the current crop of, of little ones. So, Kylo Ren, I don't. Please put his mask back on. Please get the Knights of Ren for him. Please let him start going on missions and annihilating people with the Knights of Ren. Get him back to where he was. Yeah, he's the Emperor now if, if for all intents and purposes. He's not going on missions. I, I would like to see the Knights of Ren, though. I'll, I'll give him that. And hopefully, J.J., since he's the one that came up with them, he'll he'll bring them up at some point in this. Or it could be like how the Sith retreated in the original trilogy, which is to say, not mentioned, never shown, and only people who read the novelization had any idea that such a thing existed. With the potential he had in The Force Awakens, and keep his mask back on, please. Next up, kill Raylo. Just kill the idea of it completely please make uh, make make it public to all the Raylo fans out there that it's not going to happen so they can just stay home um they can rewatch twilight or whatever it is they need to do please kill Raylo off Raylo needs to no that's a terrible idea Raylo needs to be doubled down on it's one of the few things that would could create a sense of a greater story arc across all nine films for that Anakin to have fallen to the dark side because of love, and then his grandson being redeemed from the dark side because of love, potentially. I, I only wish they would actually explore that storyline. Die before it ever starts. Thank you very much for that in advance. 
Um, next up, Poe and Finn. I mean, Poe and Finn. I liked Poe and Finn both in The Force Awakens. I did. I thought they were pretty much useless in The Last Jedi. So real simple with Poe and Finn. Let's just let's get them back to where they were in The Force Awakens, and let's play off of that. They had really good chemistry. They were really fun. Uh, and, and I really they had good chemistry for all of fifteen seconds. You know, a lot of people complain about the Finn Rose thing. I don't know the Canto Bite storyline. They needed to give Finn an out romantically. A the 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 series needs romance of some sort. Uh, it's common storytelling device is just help create tension and give uh, people something to root for, the will they won't they kind of stuff. And also, like, by by giving Finn an, an, another romantic alternative, we don't just have Finn being the uh, pathetic, pining, hung up on hooking up with Ray, who's never going to accept him and basically just friend zone him for eternity. So, no, no enjoyed the bro element that they had so so get it back to that and i think that that would be a, a really good uh side quest that they could be on or something like that and that would be really cool snoke all right so i'm kind of torn on this one but if you bring snoke back um i think that it creates more problems than solutions um because if you bring snoke back then whatever you could do with kylo kind of gets interrupted I kind of would like to see Snoke back, but I'm going to have to lean towards not bringing Snoke back. Um, I guess I would have rather Snoke just not died at all, but... This is a coin flip one for me. Um, I might side slightly on the bring Snoke back side. Uh, be a way to establish some of the... Um, to visually and finally in the movies establish some of the stuff that Palpatine had talked about, Darth Plagueis, about, you know, the powers to overcome death and achieve immortality. And even if Snoke isn't Plagueis, they could uh, still, you know, convey that he had mastered that kind of stuff and is some able, able to bring himself back. Also, we just saw Darth Maul in one of the physical movies, and he'd been in the cartoons. And so we know in the Star Wars universe... You can be cut right down in half and live and get some robot replacements. So it's it's possible for Snoke to come back. Having him come back could provide an uber threat that would force Rey and Kylo to have to team up together. As of right now, there there's really nothing to provide that without having to be just a whole new, brand new, bad thing introduced from scratch. Right As of right now, the trajectory is for Rey and Kylo to have one final conflict against each other. But it's harder to, with without, like, Luke could not have redeemed Vader as easily without Palpatine there, kind of a thing. Anyway. I think right now you have enough of a good villain potential with Kylo Ren, if you can get the Knights of Ren back in there, put his damn mask back on, and let him be a badass. I think there's enough there to where you can just move forward with Kylo, and let's, let's forget about Snoke. So, forget about Snoke. Sith. We need to bring the Sith back. We need Sith elements. We need the Sith mentioned. We need to be that needs to be part of the lore. The Sith has to exist. If they don't, then there's no point in you calling this Star Wars. I don't know what the hell you're thinking right now, Disney. I truly don't. Yes, the original trilogy was very dependent on on name dropping Sith all the time. Just wasn't Star Wars without it. But we need the Sith, so do that, please, please. Thank you. Um, next up is Ray's Force Vision. Ray's Force Vision in the Force Awakens. Fascinating scene. Fascinating opportunities. So much depth within that. It's just a few seconds of scene we got. We got to hear Yoda's voice. We got to hear Obi Wan Kenobi by Ewan McGregor's voice. There was the Knights of Ren. Uh, there was all of this fear within Rey, something that she rarely has had to experience in the sequel trilogy because she's created everything. Um, go back to that. She's afraid all the time. 
Ray's character problem isn't a lack of competency, obviously. Her thing is that she has no real motivation and no direction, and that's kind of what her character's looking for now. That That's where the arc of development lies for her, is to find a purpose for herself. And, and, and let's, let's dive deeper into that and find out what did all that mean. Of course, Ryan Johnson completely ignored that in The Last Jedi, because I don't know why, I can't understand why, that small little moment right there is the deepest um, storytelling we have gotten in the sequel trilogy, and Ryan Johnson completely ignored it. There's so much opportunity there, and I am curious to know more about all of that. I want to know why Ray heard Yoda's voice. Why did she hear Kenobi's voice? These are such fascinating things we can dive deeper into, but for some reason... She was possibly hearing echoes of events tied to that lightsaber and those who held that lightsaber. So, yeah, I guess that probably explains why she would hear Yoda and Obi-Wan because Anakin had listened to Obi-Wan and Yoda talk a lot. And Johnson completely ignored it. Holdo and Rose need to be crisp and wad in the Star Wars universe. And if my old school wrestling fans understand that reference, then you get it. Holdo and Rose need to treat, be treated like they never existed. They just wipe them from existence. Wipe their characters off the shelf. Disney is never going to do that. This is the most unrealistic list of demands one could possibly have come up with. So many of his suggestions, from a business standpoint, would never be done. You, 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 whatever issue Star Wars has with continuity, which it already had anyway, because the prequels and the and the original trilogy don't entirely match up data point by data point as is. But they're not they're not going to to wreck their continuity in the middle of what they're doing. They're they're not going to just drop characters out of existence. The, the contrivance to bring Luke back just to then have to, to get a second mentor. <sighs> Don't watch Star Wars movies with expectations. Or, I mean, what, aren't we the fandom that makes a big deal? Uh, about how bad spoilers are and we don't want to know anything about Star Wars until we see it so it can all be fresh and new, then how is it that so many people seem to be going into these movies with all these preloaded expectations of what they wanted to see out of it? Maybe if we get more story leaks and more spoilers up ahead of time, we can go into these movies better formatted for what it is we're about to experience. So it's not all some big jarring surprise that slaps us in the face of all of our childhood fantasies of playing with Luke action, Luke Skywalker action figures and him being a little badass. The the wrestling references here he makes, calling, want, wanting things to be badass. Jeremy is just another normie, basic bitch. He's no better or worse than any of the social justice warriors he complains about. It's in many ways, just like the, the political end of this social justice versus alt-right divide, conflict, fake conflict. They're all actually the same people. They're, they're all using the same language, focusing on the same things. He himself, while saying he doesn't use them as shields, uses non-white males as shields. If it doesn't matter, he should never have to bring it up. Ah, whatever. I can't just go on and on about everything about this guy, but seriously, I'm getting increasingly tired of geeks and gamers and what they have to say. It's becoming increasingly unhinged and unrealistic, and he's pretty much just keeping the fervor going so he can keep making cash. So whatever. Y'all have a good one. Please hit like and subscribe.